Hey, what's going on everyone? Um, recently I've been using the Strava API and if you don't know what Strava is, it's an app that you can download on your phone that lets you record various physical activities like runs or walks or bike rides. Um, and it's pretty cool, they have a, a really neat API and um, that's what I'm going to be covering in these videos. Um, how you can get that set up and, and what all is involved. So, so what we're looking at here is um, on my personal website I have a base map and I'm overlaying um, all my activities from the Strava API and if you click on it you can see data about that run um, so it's pretty cool I actually I had this working about a year ago but um, Strava implemented a different authorization they're using OAuth 2 now uh, before they used to have a forever token which you just set up a one-time thing but now uh, your access token actually expires after a number of hours so you have to keep refreshing it um, so that broke my app last year or actually I think last October um, and I just finally got around to fixing it and it was kind of a pain in the ass to figure out how to fix um, so while it's fresh in my head I wanted to uh, make a couple videos on it um, to hopefully help some people out because it was kind of annoying um, so I'll just point out I have two versions of this web app here. I'm using an Esri base map um, on this version and then here I'm using a leaflet and I'm gonna cover how to do both. Um, so if this sounds interesting just keep watching these videos and I'll show you how I got this set up. Um, it's kinda tricky especially if you're not a professional web developer and I am not by any stretch um, so just bear with me and I'll, I'll show you how I actually finally got it working. Um, so just while we're on this page I'm going to hit F12 um, to see the, the console here and you can see it's returning all these objects and those objects are actually every activity that I'm doing so if we click here on this object that correlates with this segment right here um, so I mean there's all this cool data that you can use I'm only populating a couple things on this table but anything that is here is fair game to, to use um, and you can see I'm actually um, symbolizing it based on date so the most recent is this thicker yellow color and red is an older activity so with that um, let's just head over to strava.com I actually just made um, a new account so I can start uh, fresh so it's easier for you guys to follow along. So if you have an account, um, just log in. If not, just create one and then log in. Um, so from here, we're gonna go to the settings page. And if you don't see this, um, my API application, you have to type API here first and then this will show up for you. So once you have all of this information, um, we can start to begin to use it. Um, so if we go over to Strava Developers, this is basically their getting started guide. And it's uh, a little bit confusing, but basically we already did all this. We have our information, we have our app. It's telling us to make a curl request. So a curl request is basically, um, curl is a command line tool. Um, usually on Linux or Macs, but uh, the Windows command prompt doesn't have it, but it's, it's a tool that lets you make HTTP requests. Um, so we're gonna, we don't have curl, so we're gonna use Postman. Um, so Postman is something you can just download. Uh, I highly recommend it. It um, makes requests a lot easier to build like this. So basically it's saying, okay, run this get command um, using your access token. So if we go to postman first let's copy uh, this we're gonna make this request in postman so if we paste that in there and then in the header we're going to type authorization and we're gonna type bearer space and we're gonna take this access token here now notice the scope is just read right here. That's going to be important. Um, it tripped me up. So if we paste that and hit send, you notice we have it returned information. Um, 
So this is good. It's working. Um, and you notice we did this athlete. So this is that's the um, request that we requested. If we go to this developers page, um, the API documentation. These are the base the the various requests you can make. So we can create an activity, which is a post. We can get an activity by an activity ID. I'm not really interested in that. We just want to get all of our activities. So list athlete activities. So that's what we want to do. Um, but the problem is only only me activities will be filtered out unless requested by a token with activity read all. So for whatever reason, this is just scope read. So the problem is we need scope re activity read all in order to list our activities. So this is where these um, instructions aren't very clear, I don't think. They kind of just leave us hanging. Um, so what we need to do next is um, it's sort of a three-step process here. We need to get an authorization code from the authorization page, and this is just a one-time thing. Um, and once we get this act, this new access token that has the activity read all, um, it's going to come with an access token and a refresh token. And from there on out, we can just use the refresh token to continually get a new access token when it expires. So what we need to do is take this link and put in our client ID. I know this seems confusing and sort of a pain to do, but um, just got to do it. We'll figure it out. Put in the client ID, and that all looks correct. So scope is activity read. Actually, let's make it read all. Activity read all. All right. Copy this. Remember, this is just a one-time thing that we're going to do in the browser. Okay, so we'll paste and go. Now it's basically saying this app wants to access your Strava information. Do you do you authorize it? So we say yes. And it looks like it didn't work, but all we're actually after is this code right here. So this code is going to let us generate an access token. So this was just the authorization code. Now we have to go back to step two and we're going to exchange this authorization code for an access token and refresh token. So right where you see code here, we're going to paste our new code and now we have to fill out this client ID and client seeker. So those are from different, um, those are different client IDs so we need to update that. So client ID, paste it, client secret. So this is basically generating a new token for us with um, the scope that we requested. Paste our client secret. Code looks good. Authorization is authorization code. So that means we want give us an authorization code. So if we copy this, um, we need to make a post request. And I'm trying. I'm going to try to find this in this um, page so I can show you guys. So this is the step we just did. So you got the authorization code. We got the code. Now here, this is generating the token, and you'll see it returns this refresh token and access token. So that's what we're going to run right now. So actually let me go back. See, it's a post. So we need to do a post here. Post. Actually, let me put this in a new a new window here. All right. Let's make sure that all looks good to you and click send. You'll notice now we have our information. We have an access token and a refresh token. So this is good. We're going to copy this access token. We're going to make a new request. And if we go back to this notepad page I, hear, I have here, so step three is view your activities using the access token you just received. 
So this is what the request basically needs to look like, and we're going to put in our access token here. Now we can run this with a get, and if we go back to Postman, um, so you can see this expires, um, but we're not going to worry about that now. We're going to paste this in here, and we're basically saying get all of our activities, and if we hit send, you'll see there's nothing there. It's an empty array, and that's because this account, I just made this account, so there are no activities, so I'm actually on my phone right now. I'm going to make an activity really quickly. Um, so it's running right now. I'm just going to let it run for like five more seconds and then stop it. And we'll refresh, we'll resend it, and it should send us back the data. So I just finished it. I'm going to write a name, hello YouTube. Save that. All right. Let's give it a second. And now if we try it again, we see our activities right there. Hello, YouTube. So we we did it. We got the information we need. We can actually do this in the browser if we wanted to. Uh, so we get all the data there. It's just JSON. Um, so this is awesome. So the only other thing we need to worry about in this video is that refresh token. Um, so what we like in our in our apps that we make, we're going to have to check to see if our token expired and if it does we need to use our refresh token so if we go back to copy that if we go here we're going to paste in this and I'm going to use my refresh token that I got earlier and put the refresh token in here and generate this. It didn't like that. Something was up with that. One sec. Oh, the client ID is not right. All right. Give me a second here. Paste. Client secret. And refresh token. I don't know what it's not liking about this. Let's see here, refresh token. Did I use the right refresh token? Nine A B five. Nope. <laughs> Had the wrong refresh token here. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, there we go. So now we have a refresh token and an access token. Now this refresh token, notice that it's the same that it was when we initially made the request to get the access token. So this, 99% um, sure, doesn't expire, um, but this does, and you can actually see when it expires. So in our apps, we basically need to run this request every time to using our refresh token, which is here, to get an access token. Um, and once we have the access token, we can make our request to get the activities. So this is an important request right here. So this is an important request, and view your activities using. So these are the two requests that are going to be in our code. Um, so I know that was a little confusing. I'm going to stop the video now. It's getting a little bit long, but hopefully that makes sense and wasn't too confusing. Um, I think it'll make more sense once we start working with the data and using it in code. Um, but just remember, these are the commands that um, will lead you to being able to do this. It was kind of tricky for me to figure it out. But um, I'll leave this up and I'll put it in the description. Um, and you guys can copy it and paste it, put your stuff in, and hopefully get it working. Uh, Alright, talk to you guys in the next video.